the final dimension that we get there. 439. That will do. Okay, so we're back at the press, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run my piece of brass here through a 45 ACP resizing die, and probably doesn't need to be done, but I just want to make sure that everything is properly sized, uh, basically from that my witness mark down. So uh, I get the <laughs> Camp Dry Mink Oil. It's good stuff. And I got a little flux brush that I use for this, and I just slather a bunch of it on. And you, this is where, you know, a dab or 50 will do just fine. All right. Into the shell holder. And up into the die. Oh, yeah, let me get the primer out, too, because that piece of brass hadn't been deprimed yet. That's always handy. All right. That's it. That's all we got to do for that. Okay, so now we, get, we make sure we've got the dimensions good from our uh, witness line down. Out comes 45 die. And now we go to the homemade bushing die. And again, I'll take my brush and I will generously schmoo the goo on the inside there. It's like, you know, and since I don't have a stop, and since I don't have an extended shell holder, I screw this, I thread this in through the bottom of the press. The threads go all the way through, it works the same way. Now, one thing to note, the press threads are 7 8 by 14 uh, NC, I believe, so uh, national course. The bushing, however, is a pipe fitting. That's NPT threads. That's national pipe thread. The press threads are the same dimension uh, in diameter, straight down, top to bottom. At least they're supposed to be. National pipe thread uh, seals up your pipes, like the pipes in your house, because the threads are tapered. And it's not really that good of a system, but it's the system we use. You know, it's kind of that you know, metric versus English measurement system, but. Um, so what happens is you'll get a little bit of slop sometimes in here, but that's not going to be a showstopper. We can utilize the, uh, the self-centering of the ram and the shell holder to do our dirty work for us. And we'll, if, even if this floats a little bit, this will still relatively center everything okay. So we start her off, and that's where she's going to be. Let me get a little more light down here because I need to be able to see the witness mark, and then we just gently bring the press down, or the handle down, and the ram up, until, eh, see, I'm losing it again. Let's see if I can get it from this way. There we go. Until we get that witness mark even with the bottom of our die. Just there, okay? And then back out, and then I'll give it just one more little feed to the same point. Make sure we got that size. Out she comes. And that's it. You now have a sized piece of brass for a 45 ACP shot shell. Now there's more to do. You know, you're going to want to uh, deburr and chamfer the case mouth a little bit. And obviously before we use it, we want to check it. And hopefully this one came out okay, because I'm still working out the method. But the best thing to use is the barrel of the pistol in which you plan to shoot this round. That is really your best case gauge. But to keep things generic, and a lot of reloaders will already have uh, these, or they'll want to get one anyway for uh, reloading 45. Is just a, a Wilson case gauge, 45 ACP case gauge. They have for about 30 bucks. Amazon's got them. If you don't have one, get one. They're they're handy. They're not a replacement for uh, headspace tool or headspace gauge, but they're useful. And we go, and you can see that we're about oh I don't know several thousands above flush. So we're not quite done yet. And I kind of figured that would happen. It's all right. So I'm going to give it a little more schmoo because the last thing I want to do is have to apply a lot of extra force to get this in the move because then I'll overshoot it and the piece of brass will be ruined and then you basically just done all that work for nothing. So we'll go back up to our witness mark, right? And then just a little bit of force. And I mean just a smidge. 
almost, in fact, you won't even see it move. You'll feel it move before you see it move. And back out, give it a little turn, just to kind of allow for anything that might have shifted. And just back up to that same point, and that's it. That's all we want to do. Again, this is one of those things where you can, you know, go back and fix it if you overdo it, or if you underdo it, but if you overdo it, that's it. It's, you know, throw it away. And there we go. Nice, flush, even with the top of the, the uh, case gauge. And that's it. That's all we need. You know, it might be a thou over or something like that. Maybe. But we're pretty close. And you can see that our overall length, too, which the other side of the case is used to measure, is looking pretty good as well. All right. Might have to do a little trimming, but uh, a chamfer and deburr is going to take off, you know, some of that material as well. So for the chamfer and deburr, I just use an RCBS uh, chamfer and deburr tool. Sorry about having to adjust the light, folks, but I'm doing some lighting work down here in Man Cave and everything's not set up yet. But, no, well, you know, just a, a few twists to the inside just to clean out that chaff and those little stringers and hanger oners and boogers and, you know, cling-ons. And just a little bit on the outside. Again, we're just cleaning it up. All right. I just want to avoid any sharp edges, because eventually we're going to have to be stuffing, um, you know, wad cards or shot cards in here. And that's it. And there you go. A properly formed 45 ACP shot shell case. You can make snake loads. You can make mouse loads. Um, they're really good for killing rodents. Most people put, like, number 8 shot or 7.5 shot in these. Uh, which is fine, you know, it'll do the trick. I actually want to try putting like some number 12 shot uh, in there just to give you an idea of the, of, of the differences in size, I think. I have, yeah, here it is. This really nifty dealy bob that I got from Federal a long time ago. So you can see the different, some of the different shot sizes here, right? And yeah, let's get the light. So let's see, what do we got here? We have got, I need a pointy tool. Pointy tools are useful. All right, so that's number eight shot right there. All right, that's eight and a half. And it's nine right there. Okay, so that's nine shot. And it's wee, there we go. And it's pretty small stuff. But you can get even smaller. You can get down to number 12. That's what's in snake loads for like a 22 long rifle. Um, you know, this is, here's seven, right? So to kind of compare it, that's a seven shot. And that's a nine shot right there. So there's a pretty good size difference there. And that's going to affect how many pellets you can get into the round as well. But, uh, anywho. So there you have it. The next video will be about finishing up the brass. Um, right now it's just going to get tumbled and primed and uh, otherwise prepared. And then we're going to get, uh, we're going to figure out some loads. Now there's a lot of, I would say, anecdotally published load data. A lot of old articles uh, out there. So they are researched. But again, they were working with powders as they were formulated, you know, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, in some cases longer. And powders don't say the same. So we'll probably start off with something minimal. We'll work our way up. If we're lucky, we'll get this to cycle uh, and eject cleanly out of a 1911, which I know can be done. Um, but if not, it'll just be a single shot thing. But you know, you're not going to use these for for uh, you know much other than dispatching the odd uh, rodent or pest or snake or something of that sort. You know, if you carry a magazine uh, full of them with you, it's all you need. So thanks for watching. Um, if anybody has any suggestions on how to make, especially this die here, any better, I would always appreciate it. You know, my next thought was to just get one of these in either stainless or uh, galvanized steel. Take the steel outside, burn off the galvanization, or, you know, sand off, sandblast off the galvanization because you don't want to inhale that zinc dust. And then basically just do the same set of operations, the drilling and, and the, the hand uh, finishing and whatnot, and get this to be made out of steel. It might go a little better. It might require less effort on the press handle, and I might get a better finished product. I can also probably have a little more control over um, this lip here where the transition from the flat into the hole is, and that might give me 
a slightly crisper shoulder. This shoulder is functional and it's usable, but it's not as crisp as I've seen some, some of them. Um, so you got suggestions for that? Great. If you got any information about uh, good 45 ACP shot shell loads that you want to share, uh, leave a comment. I would really appreciate it uh, if anyone else has been doing this and the recipes, regardless of how you make the brass or, or you know do the loading process, just even the recipes if you want to share any of that data. Uh, that'd be great. Give me some starting points for that as well. Um, but yeah, again, you know, I basically made a die here uh, for this, uh, you know, for four or five bucks. You know, maybe a little bit more in Canadian pesos, uh, maybe a lot more Mexican pesos. I well, you can't do it in Mexico anyway because they suck. But uh, yeah, by all means, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I want to share the wealth and share the information. All right, thanks for watching.